Hello there, my fellow hoarders of knowledge, and welcome back to some Warhammer Fantasy lore. Today we shall conclude our two-parter regarding the Cult of Verena. Last time we learned about where the cult comes from, what they're all about, what they believe in, and what their temples offer. Today we're gonna focus mostly on the cultists and the priests themselves, see how they are organized, their unique sects, their rituals, and more. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The cultists of Verena are quite an eclectic bunch, comprising a huge variety of academics, scholars, magisters, lawyers, and proper priests, all devoted to the worship of learning and justice. The Cult of Verena is particularly popular among the Wizards of the Grey Order and the Light Order out of the Imperial Colleges of Magic. Verenian cultists dress in a wealth of different manners, from hole-ridden sackcloth robes to scholarly gowns, and expensively tailored jackets and breeches. Their most common garb, however, are flowing scholarly robes and gowns of white fabric, to represent the light of knowledge and reason. All cultists show their devotion by wearing amulets depicting owls, sets of scales, or swords. Varenian judges and high priests often wear heavier robes than their contemporaries, to show their status, often accompanied by powdered wigs. Most cultists also carry swords, especially on formal occasions, to symbolize the Sword of Justice. The priests themselves rarely use these swords, except to make a point during a debate but for more militant members of the cult, they are far from decorative. The more devout members of the cult take to decorating their costume with fragments of lore, copying extracts of scrolls and books onto strips of parchment that they pin to their robe, painting their armor with quotations, or even tattooing Varenian scripture onto their flesh. As with other religious cults in the old world, the path to becoming a servant of Verena is not an easy one. In fact, it requires a lot of patience and study, for the cult does not suffer a fool. From the moment a candidate comes into a Varenian temple to partake of the accumulated lore, he becomes ensconced in a rigorous regimen of lecture, research, and learning. His or her existence becomes committed to gaining wisdom. Clever candidates take their time to study at a university prior to seeking admittance into the cult, because doing so expedites the process greatly. Many will study at the University of Nuln, but some seek other, more avant-garde institutions, such as those found in Altdorf. The ones who train to become scholars and lawyers find the most success once they join the cult of Verena. Once the high priest decides initiates have received enough training, they will face a panel drawn from the wisest of the priesthood. The panel will ask them questions on a variety of topics, from common knowledge to more specialized subjects, to judge their wisdom, and engage them in debate and discourse to judge their oratory and reasoning skill. Candidates that satisfy the panel are ordained as new priests of the cult. The official view of these fellows is that Verena is the only head, and thus they don't require a church leader like the Grand Theogonist of Sigmar or the Ar Ulrich. Instead, the cult of Verena is, unusually for an old world cult, organized along more local lines with the cult of each city, or even in each temple, managing its own affairs as a tiny cult within a cult. It is only when you consider that Verena espouses wisdom over bureaucracy and justice over tyranny that the logic behind this practice becomes more clear. The view of the cult, although there are always arrogant and autocratic figures who disagree, is that it would be unjust and unwise for one temple or one high priest to impose their opinion upon everyone else. In practice, unfortunately, it is more a case that an entire cult full of opinionated, often arrogant intellectuals is unlikely to ever agree upon anything, reducing the activities of the cult as a whole to continuous bickering and arguments. Each temple comprises initiates and priests, all controlled by a single high priest. The high priest oversees the day-to-day -day running of the temple, supervising holy rites and controlling the temple library. The high priest is chosen from among the ranks of the temple priests, who come to a consensus as to who is the wisest and most learned among them. 
A high priest who is outdebated often or who repeatedly makes foolish decisions will quickly lose respect and authority and be stripped of their rank. The cult is divided into several vague philosophical and ideological schools sharing similar ideology. The schools are by no means mutually exclusive, with some priests belonging to several and some belonging to none. The two foremost schools are the Order of Scalebearers and the Order of Lorekeepers. The Scalebearers focus on the aspect of Verena as a judge and arbiter. They believe that justice is more important than learning, and they act as mediators. They are sometimes assisted in their duty by the Templars from the Order of the Sword and Scale. The Lorekeeper, by contrast, focus on the aspect of Verena as the guardian of knowledge and they believe that learning is more important than justice, and are usually found in the roles of librarians and scholars. They are closely allied with the Order of Mysteries and the rarer Knights of the Scroll. They also have several formal orders in addition to the schools of thought, foremost of which is the Order of Mysteries and the Order of Everlasting Light. These have begun as a local Verenian cult which had outgrown its founding temple and assimilated several other similarly thinking temples. To all intents and purposes, the orders are treated as temples of Verena despite their bigger size, with still a single high priest overseeing lesser priests and initiates. The cultists of Verena greet each other with both hands held and cupped by their waist, then extended out to the sides, representing the scales of justice. They can use many signs and salutes during their debates and when they stand in for someone in a court of law. In order to show disapproval, they will hold their left hand straight out, palm turned in and down. The right hand, held up straight, palm in and up, shows approval. Tapping one's throat is a silent, polite way of expressing a desire to speak, while stroking an ear is a sign that another person should stay silent. When Varenians believe somebody is lying, they will stroke their chin. Many Varenians also close their eyes before making a decision to suggest the blindness of justice. Because one of Verena's mandates is to spread the ideas of learning and justice, there are some Varenian priests who take on the job of wandering missionaries. They will travel to lands where tyrants rule, like Kislev, Bretonia, or the border princes where the ideas of justice and learning are either ignored or set aside in favor of despotism. This does not make the missionaries popular in the places they go, and many actively persecute priests of Verena as a result, whether they are missionaries or not. A particular case happened in Brion, where three missionaries were executed, as they were accused as working as anarchists and dangerous dissidents. Ironically, the executors were not the local nobility but the peasants themselves, who did not want the rabble-rousing priesthood to bring any unwanted attention from the nobility. This accusation is not without precedence either. More than one tyrant had been brought low by trouble inspired by Varenian rhetoric and justice, and many would sooner act preemptively and risk the wrath of the cult itself than that of their people. It could be said that every temple of Verena represents a separate sect within the cult itself. Due to the fact that every temple is under its own jurisdiction, the manner in which Verena is worshipped and her strictures interpreted can vary greatly throughout the empire, and can even vary between two temples in the same city. In any other religion, this would rip apart a cult in countless schisms, but the Verenians embrace and some even revel in all these differences. The cult does have its rather more fanatical members and orders that the more mainstream followers would rather ignore. The fanatics are tolerated by the cult in the spirit of understanding, but they are not actively endorsed. Varenian zealots can cause trouble for local authorities, as they travel the roads of the empire in the guise of traveling judges. They will stir up local populations, rousing them to drag those they feel have wronged them in front of the zealots where they preside over an ad hoc court and dispense their own particular brand of justice. The moderate Varenians do their best to rein in such characters, because they see it as a perversion of their own judicial system. One particular group of these fanatics is called the Scroll Bearers. They fervently believe that knowledge is power and actively crave that power. They do that by collecting and hoarding as many scrolls, tomes and books as they can get their hands on by whatever means they can, 
even as going as far as stealing what they cannot buy. They are far from altruistic and jealously guard their collections from others. For that reason, they are viewed with disdain by the other Varanians, who believe that knowledge should be available to all. Several minor sects of Verena worship the goddess in many different aspects. For example, the sect of Cleo is popular with historians and explorers, worshipping her as the delver into the past. Verena also has a male aspect, called Ranbeth the Shrewd, embodying the perfect lawyer, who ceaselessly pursues the truth. Meanwhile, Scripsisti is the goddess of calligraphers and writing, and has taken on a more antagonistic role of late, railing against the spread of the printing press. In addition to its schools and sects, the cult of Verena also has a few distinct orders, although all but the Order of Mysteries are considered lesser orders. Foremost of these are the Templars of Verena. The goddess espouses the use of arms only as a last resort when rhetoric and wisdom have failed, but her strictures do include the provision that a sword of justice needs to be used when absolutely required. There are two other Templar Orders in addition to the infamous Order of Everlasting Light. These are the Order of the Sword and Scale and the Knights of the Scroll. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the justice and knowledge pursuing cult of Verena for today. I hope you folks enjoyed learning about these fellows, as it is, in my opinion, a mostly positive influence in the old world even if some of their traits and quirks might sound better on paper than they do in reality. And for all the aficionados of Warhammer Fantasy deities out there, I'm gonna be making more of these videos as well, as I do want to cover the cults of Ulrich, Tal, and Myrmidia at some point too. What about you though? Is Verena among your favorite deities of the old world? What do you like or dislike most about her cult? I do look forward to reading your opinions on it in the comments below. Thanks a lot for watching to the end, and have a healthy and awesome day.